We're trying to keep him around 30, um, trying to get him as much rest as, as we can. Um, we've played him a lot of minutes, played him 35 two days ago. So as long as we were hanging in there, then, then uh, we wanted to limit the minutes a little bit. Not limit them, but not over overplay him. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. All right, Coach, we'll talk to you on Thursday. We'll hold your feet to the fire. Oh, yeah. Um, we're also streaming live on Twitch and YouTube, twitch.tv slash 95.7 The Game, youtube.com slash 95.7 The Game. Watch us live and take a look at Dibs Financial Glow. Uh, you subscribe to the channel. All of our content all day long is on Twitch and YouTube. So join us. Have a whole lot of fun. We'll chat with you. Uh, rip us. That seems to be a popular thing to do. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. So I don't even know if we cut this with the pause. I bet we didn't. But here's Steph's reaction to the lengthy fourth quarter rest. I mean, obviously, you're comparing it to last game and my normal rotation. Like I want to play as many minutes as, as I'm fresh and able to. So a little bit, knowing that they were just going on a run. It was the lead was kind of withering away. So, you know, we played the whole fourth quarter in India against Indiana. Didn't work out. This didn't work out. So we gotta find somewhere in the middle. Okay. So. <laughs> I wanna play as many minutes as I'm fresh and able to do. Fresh and able to play. Mm -hmm. And that's where I side with Kerr and Rick Celebrini, who is the guy who tracks all the players' minutes and the movements and the usage and all the rest of it. And they came up with a plan, and the plan indicated that 30 minutes was going to be the number for Steph on a Sunday night. And so that's what you go with. And I do believe that if you play Steph Curry two more minutes or four more minutes, you're not necessarily going to get more productivity from Steph Curry. There's no guarantee. Well, I, I, I do understand the frustration on, on, on a couple of levels. First of all, Steph could have easily said, no, I wasn't surprised. That was the plan. But he didn't say that. Right. Uh, this is also the basketball version of uh, Austin Slater hitting a homer in the fourth and getting pinch hit for in the fifth or whatever, right? We're sticking to the plan no matter what the scoreboard says. And that gets people. I know, and I get why it gets people. So is there any room in your mind for, well, I know we were going to sit him, but we got a tight game and we got an opportunity to win this one, so... You know, now it's starting to slip away. Why don't we jam Steph in there a little bit earlier? Yeah, there's room for that in my mind, but I also think that, you know, it's an NBA game. So even though it was, quote, slipping away from you, it didn't really slip away from you until you get to the eight-minute mark. And over the course of the next one minute, they went on a 5-0 run, and that's where it went from, it was 3-8. to eight. It went from 3-8 to eight in a minute. And I'm looking, and there was a timeout in there after it went from three to eight. Other than that, there was no stoppage. So, did we want Steph Curry at the table there waiting? There was a full minute where, and I'm looking at the game log here. Draymond comes in with 8:56. You got a miss. There's a foul. There's a miss. There's a foul. Miss rebound. Miss block rebound. They make it. Miss rebound. They score. Then a timeout. So. It's about a minute of actual game flow where you couldn't have put him in. Well, you could call timeout. Well, they finally did. Yeah. They you finally can, did with 6.54 can, to go. You can create a stoppage of play if you want. Well, you can unless Clay Thompson has the ball well, <laughs> and he pulls from 27. I just, I, I, I don't know. Steph Curry was asked, uh, can they afford to be limiting minutes right now considering what's going on? The uh, situation will define itself pretty clearly, and it is in, in kind of real time, so... Every game matters. You know, we're inching closer to the other end of the standings that we never thought we'd be in. Nobody's going to wave the white flag and say, you know, you're you're mailing it in. And if that means playing more minutes, then I'll be ready to do that. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I th listen, there's going to be an openness to go do it. I guess I'm just having, I'm having a hard time with the night in and night out. Everything would be going well if you had just done this. If you had just... If you had just played Jonathan Kaminga instead of Andrew Wiggins, then everything would be fine. Well, but Jonathan wasn't playing well last night. So what is it that the Warriors are supposed to do? 
Steve is supposed to know going into the game who's going to play well and right. who isn't. Right. What's so hard about that, Kerr? Mm, nothing. <laughs> other than that's your job. Well, and the other part of that, Mark, is find me a game, and there's been a few where you had more than five guys who actually played well on the same night. And that's where I side with you more than I do with the angry mob because last night's a good example. When you look at the overall performance of the team, you didn't have a clear-cut five that you want to have out there at all times. You think the answer's in the building? No. What's the question? The answer. How do you get good again? What's the answer? That's the question. The yeah. answer is get yeah. better players. How do you compete at a high level, how do you maximize the remainder of it. Steph Curry's career? The answer, the simple answer, is get better players. Okay. The more difficult answer involves how you go about offloading players and bringing in players. And we've done this exercise, and I'm willing to do it between now and the end of time as need be. But you're going to look at Clay. Clay's a yes or a no. And if he's a yes, you can't pay him as much as maybe he wants. So does he take a discount? Chris Paul, you're not paying 30. The sentiment is that he likes it here and he wants to come back. But would he come back for minimum. the, the mid-level? Minimum. Or the minimum? Would CP3 play for the minimum? Probably not. Yeah. I mean. Hmm, I wouldn't think. You're asking for some real pie-in-the-sky stuff. Kavon's going to be gone. And what do you do with Andrew Wiggins? So if you can offload $100 million... Then you think, okay, free agency. There aren't a lot of great uh, franchise-changing well, free agents, so I, I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. I'm not. But even, the answer is not in the building, right? I'm not even in off-season mode yet. Like because either, we're not. Yeah. We're not in the off-season. I'm not in off-season mode. I, I. I'm just in. Like, can we? Can we actually have a real conversation about what's going on with the Golden State Warriors? We started this last week. You know, you were in Vegas having a blast, and I was sitting here going, y'all realize, like, and and I know you and I have a difference of opinion on this. I like the play-in tournament. I like it. But there's a danger to it from the fan perspective. The danger to it is that it can fool you into think that things are actually going okay for your team. And 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 there's no doubt that that's the case here for the Warriors and the Lakers. These proud franchises, great fan bases, unbelievable achievement, for these franchises, and we're all sitting here going, well, if they watch out, if they get in there, watch out because you know, because championship DNA, stop. Why are we fooled into thinking that these teams are contending? There are more teams ahead of them than there are behind them. They are not contending, they're hanging out with the Rockets. No one's even thought of the Rockets all year long. And I understand who's on the Warriors team. And so old de habits die hard. So sure, we're going to sit here and go, yeah, you wouldn't want to play them. And that's true. That's fine. I'm sure the T-Wolves don't want to play the Warriors or the Lakers. Great. But don't get fooled into thinking that this team is contending or close. Their excuses this year are not the same as they were last year. When everybody was all, you know, not liking each other and all of that. And that Wiggins was, going was gone on. for two months right. and the whole thing, yeah. Sure, Wiggins missed a little bit. Yeah, Draymond got suspended. You had plenty. You had plenty of availability on your roster if you were close. So that's where I'm at right now, 70 games in. I certainly hope the Warriors don't get the 10 seed. And then people walk away going, well, they're in the playoffs right there. Like, could have, could have, should have, would have. Right. They're, they're, they're in 10th place. You're five games out of the eight. So if there was no cockamamie uh, play-in tournament, and I do think it is cockamamie. I know you do. And it's designed for this very reason, so we can have LeBron and Steph clash. Da, 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 da. So the NBA can get their one-off with the two biggest names in the sport going head-to-head -head in a March Madness-style game. See, but what they don't want to tell you is that neither of these teams has a shot in Hades of actually going into the playoffs and beating one of these really good playoff teams. Well, but but that, that would presuppose that, that they put the play-in tournament together knowing that big names would end up in it. I love the play-in tournament. That's a safety net. Yeah, I love the play-in tournament for two reasons. Number one, it creates... One and done urgency games. You love those. I love those. You just went to Vegas for a bunch of those. Whew. 
So I love one and done urgency games. Sports should do that when they can. Number two, I, I look at it the opposite way. You call it cockamamie. I, like a lot of people thought the seven and the eight seed was cockamamie. A lot of years, that team that's in the eight seed doesn't even have a winning record. So why are they a playoff team? And what this does is separate that seven and eight seed from the top six. And it makes them go through a further dance in order to even achieve the playoffs. And I think that's fair. Like, yes, the one seed should get a tired eight seed that just had to win an elimination game. You should. You earn that in the regular season. So I love the play-in tournament. But don't let it fool you into thinking that your team is actually healthy. This is not a healthy... Well, we got fooled last year by Miami. So that's... And that is the fool's gold, though, because Miami is a different team than this team is. But they were a play-in team, and they went to the NBA Finals. So... That, for the NBA, is exactly what they want fans to believe. Sure. And I don't think that this Warrior team is you know, playing to the point where they're leading anyone to believe that. No, and, and, and I'm sure, because Steve used that example with us just a week and a half ago, yes, people will use that example and will probably use that example for the next 20 years because between now and 20 years from now, Miami will still probably be the only play-in team that made it to the NBA Finals. It's not the way to go. Right. And they also did it out of the 7 or the 8, not out of the 9 or the 10. The 9 or the 10 is a death march. It's a death march, especially the 10. You can beat two of these teams on the road back to back and then go do something once you're done with that? That, that, Well, the problem is you got to face the 1. No matter if you're the 9 or the 10, even if if you're the 10 and you do win two on the road, you have two more on the road against the best team in your conference as a reward. So... Now you're talking about a four-game road trip in three different cities, including two against the best team in your conference. That, in and of itself, makes the eight beating the one more difficult than it used to be if you can get to the eight by winning that 9-10 game and then beating the 7-8 loser. We're going to take some of your phone calls, but I'm also mindful that it's 245. So, in theory, Shohei Otani should be speaking momentarily. As soon as that goes down, we'll let you know exactly what the takeaway from the whole thing is. But in the meantime, let's go to Ben and Concord on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Ben. Thanks for calling. What's up? Hello, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah. Huge fan. Thanks, uh, ben. Just listening to what you guys are saying. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, just listen to what you're saying. I'm looking at the stats for all of our losses, and it doesn't look like it's the Steph Curry minutes problem. It just looks like Wiggins... Podzimski, they're not doing enough to be in the starting lineup. I think they should put Clay back into the starting lineup. Let him get some flow. Get Trace Jackson uh, Davis in there in the starting lineup because him and Clay are phenomenal together. And we need more big screens for Steph and Clay in that offense. And somebody to hold down a big on defense. I don't know why we don't start Trace Jackson Davis. I mean, we, I, we've tried the Podzinski thing. The guy hasn't averaged over 10 in the last four or five games, maybe in his whole career. I don't know why we're still riding that Podzinski thing. Wiggins has been a complete mess all year. Let's go with some guys who are a little bit more consistent, and let's get Clay hot. Because if Clay doesn't get hot, then the Warriors don't get hot. It's, so, Steph so, needs a right-hand man, and Clay's been the guy the whole time. So, Ben, can we go through a little quick exercise with you? Let, yeah. Let's say that everything you just said, they did it, and it went great. The result right. for the Warriors would be what? Uh, eight seed. Then what are we doing? Like, that's kind of my point. And, and Ben, thank you very much. I thought that was an honest answer. Yeah. So, yeah. so they're the 10. And if everything that they've currently got on their roster and their bench, if everything is cool, clicks, perfect, health, flow, all of it, then you're going to get the eight. Right, right. Pass. Well, and Clay, I'm out. quite honestly, has been much better as a reserve yeah. than he's been as a starter. Great point. He's scoring three points a game more. His uh, field goal percentage is 46 instead of 40, 41. His three balls, 43 instead of 37. Across the board, and it's no longer a really small sample, Mark. He's come off the bench 14 times now, and his points a game, 
His minutes are down a click, three minutes a game, but he's scoring more and he's more productive. He's more effective off the bench. 